You still don't know what I'm up to, do you? You stick around and you'll find out. I'm one genius that don't mind sharing his knowledge. I'll teach you everything I know. You'll be as smart as any dog around. <laughs> oh, you know what I mean. Make yourself useful. Hand me that oil can. Thanks. Big help you are. You bit holes in it. <laughs> I've been stuck with cheap help before, but you take the cake. Hey, Joe. What's that? It's for Betty Joe. Yeah? Yeah, maybe Betty Joe lost her umbrella in New York and somebody's returned it. It says right on the box, Pixley Florist. That's a funny place to leave an umbrella. <laughs> Why don't you and him get together, have a meeting of the mind? <laughs> Oh, they're gorgeous. Oh, beautiful. Who are they from? Oh, that's funny. From an admirer. Is that all? Pretty expensive admiring. <laughs> Pixley Flores. Maybe they're from Peter Fuller. He lives in Pixley. These? From Peter? I doubt it. Last time I went out with him, I had to go Dutch treat. And that included gas for his car and a new fuel pump. Yeah, none of these yahoos around here could even afford the stems, let alone the flowers. <laughs> well, that must be it. They must have been wired from another city. One of the men you met in New York. I didn't meet that many men. Well, it only takes one. I can't imagine who. Well, start thinking. Whoever he is, this dude must be loaded with loot. And I suppose that's the reason for Betty Jo to go for him? Kate, I was never one to let a pile of money stand in the way of romance. <laughs> Let's put these in water before Dan Cupid starts wearing a money belt instead of a diaper. <laughs> you mean you really don't know who they're from? I haven't the slightest idea. Hi. Hi, Steve. Hello. Uh, what are those? Well, offhand, I'd say they were more of those. Anyway, they're for you. For me? Unless you've stopped being Betty Joe Bradley. <laughs> From an admirer. Well, hey, what are you trying to do, shortstop? Make me jealous? You mean they're not from you? No, I was getting my plane gas up in Pixley, and somebody asked me to deliver these to the Shady Rest. You mean you don't know who they're from? Well, what she means is it could be any one of a dozen fellas. Mom! I can believe that. Just one thing. Promise me you won't marry any one of those guys until you check with me, okay? Mary, he's such a tease. What makes you think he was teasing? Huh? Well, he was right about one thing. Somebody has given you a big rush.
figured out who the millionaire playboy is that's sending Betty Jo all them flowers? Not yet, but we soon will. Steve's flying into pictures to check with the florist. If it were me, I'd hire a whole fleet of detectives. When you've got a live one like that running around, you don't want to let him get away. Uh, yeah, yeah. But Joe, uh, would you mind telling me what this is all about? That's my labor-saving device. <laughs> Uncle Joe, if you save any more labor, you'll never get out of the port swing. <laughs> I've had a lot of brainstorms in my time, but this is sheer genius. I'm running a system down to the shady rest stop so you don't have to haul the guest baggage back and forth. All you do is hang a bag on this cable, and away she goes. Yeah, well, I can understand how you get the luggage down to the cannonball. It's down ill. How are you going to get it up here? <laughs> Kate, when you're baking a cake, do I ask questions? <laughs> but, um... I kind of think this is an obvious point to bring up, don't you? Oh, uh, yeah. I'll go ahead and sleep on the problem. <laughs> it's amazing how he can work a nap into any situation. Hi, Miss Bradley. Hi, Ed. Boy, this is a break finding you alone like this, because I got to talk to you about something real important. Oh, well, pull up a chair. Thanks. Uh, Miss Bradley. I've come to talk to you about one of your daughters. Well, I must say you picked a good subject. Uh, Miss Bradley, I don't know whether you know it or not, but I've always been sort of fond of Betty Jo. Well, I knew you once were, but I thought that had blown over. It did, but ever since Betty Jo came back from her vacation, she sort of, well, turned me on again. That's real <laughs> hip talk. <laughs> hip talk from the heart. She's changed. You noticed it too? I couldn't help notice it because she's been... Hip talk from the heart. Say, that's good. Thank you. Ever since her vacation, she's become a sophisticated young lady. And that's the whole point. Point of one. Well, just between me and you, up to now, I always thought I was a little too suave for Betty Jo. You know, worldly, debonair. <laughs> but now you feel that she's caught up with you. Exactly. And here's why I've come to talk to you. I've reached the point in life where I can do something about going with the girl for keeps because I've got a new job. Oh, congratulations. Where are you working? On my off hours from the Douglases, I work for Mr. Harvey at the Pixley Florist. Pixley Florist? <laughs> yeah. Ain't that neat? Yeah, it's neat. Um, uh, isn't that the place where they send out the flowers in those fancy boxes? Yeah. Real ritzy. <laughs> yes? Ma'am? By any chance, you don't happen to be the secret admirer. That's me. Pretty clever, huh? <laughs> but Ab, aren't those flowers very expensive? No. Take those long stem roses. They were supposed to go to the Pixley Hospital, but the patient didn't pull through, and Mr. Harvey let me have them for half price. Pretty lucky, huh? <laughs> Luckier than the patient. <laughs> baseball game. Let me see that. What do you think? No, no, he's not the type that would send a girl flowers. Mm, definitely not. Doesn't have that sensitivity. <laughs> okay, so much for you. You're eliminated. <laughs> uh, who's he? This is the boy who took me sailing on Lake Placid. Hey, now we're getting someplace. This could be the one. Do you have any more pictures of him? Hello. Hi, Mom. Uh -huh. Hi, uh, here's one where he took me to the Four Seasons. I think he's the one. Definitely the long stem type. Oh, girl. Mm. Abby's here. Oh, we said hello. Hi, Ab. Hi. It's gotta be. Without a doubt. Um, Ab has a new job. Oh, oh gee, that's congratulations. Buddy Joe, don't you agree we've made a wise choice? It would be pretty exciting if it were. <laughs> Ab's job is in Pixley. Oh. Good for you, Ab. It's close to home. Nice to hear you're getting ahead in the world. Oh, right. <laughs> Here's another picture of us. An adventure this. He's the only one you've got three pictures of. Boy, they look even prettier than when I sent them. I bet on it. I'm inclined to... What did you say, Ab? I said they look even prettier than when I sent them. <laughs> you? Meet the secret admirer. You mean... You mean you, uh... Uh, them? I knew this had happened, Miss Bradley. She's so overjoyed, she's speechless. <laughs> Betty Joe, I ain't gonna beat around the bush any longer. 
from this moment on, you and me have passed the handshaking stage. <laughs> I'm serious. We got a humdinger of a future together. Ab, please. I'm on my way up, and you're just the little woman I want at my side. Besides my Douglas job and the one at the florist, I'll be moonlighting at the cannery. Three jobs? Well, that wouldn't leave us much time together. I got me a schedule. I can work in between 11.10 and 11.45 p.m. Yes, I, I admire your being so ambitious. Don't but... fight it, Betty Jo. Uh, no, I am. Holy cow. What? I just remembered. Mr. Harvey told me to turn on the refrigeration for the tropical flowers, and I plumb forgot. Oh, that's terrible. No, there's a bright side to everything. How'd you like a cassage of brown orchids? <laughs> Me. Well, that's one of the penalties you pay for being a femme fatale. Mom, don't make fun. I don't know what to do. Anything like this ever happened to you? I had my innings. <laughs> you mean you had fellas interested in you that you weren't particularly interested in? Mm-hmm. You actually had other boyfriends besides Dad? Yes, I did, and don't act so surprised. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just that, well, I think of you mostly as square. <laughs> Yes. No. What I mean is, well, back in the olden days. I don't mean that either. Well, the olden days weren't so bad. I used to peek out from under the canvas of the covered wagon and flirt at the boys as we moved westward old. You're making it very difficult for me to communicate. Em's a nice fellow, and I, and I don't want to hurt him. But how do I let him down easy? Do like I do. I just tell him I have a boyfriend. You mean he's been after you, too? Oh, no, no. I mean fellas in general. If I don't want a guy hanging around, I just tell him I have a steady. But you haven't got a steady, so I make one up. Mom, did you hear that? Yes, I did. And I don't think she learned that at her mother's knee. <laughs> but if she wants to keep from hurting Ed, that's the easiest way out. I wonder who I could get to pretend he's my fellow. Anybody. How about Steve? Steve? Oh, no, I wouldn't have enough nerve to ask him to be my boyfriend. No, I couldn't. Okay, you wanted my advice? I gave you my advice. For you, Betty Jo. Oh, no. What is it? It isn't a hamburger to go from Clyde's Root Beer Palace. <laughs> After today, I'm convinced more than ever that you're the girl for me. Can't wait until I see you tomorrow. Your secret admirer, Eb. Where's Steve? I gotta ask him something. Wait a minute. Something written on the back? Yeah, but it's been scratched out. With deepest sympathy at your time of sorrow. <laughs> Kate, you know the problem he was worried about? Getting a luggage back up here? Got her all solved. Every time the cannonball comes in, me and Floyd just raise the post at the other end. <laughs> well, there comes the cannonball now. Hang around, witness, the first trial run. Well, I don't think we'll have much occasion to send empty suitcases down to the cannonball. <laughs> uh, unless we have some awful poor guests. <laughs> Way ahead of you, Kate. I got it all worked out. <laughs> Say, Ab, mind if I ask you something? No, go ahead. How come lately you've been walking around in the days and sort of glassy eyes? I'll tell you why, Floyd. Because I'm in love. That's why. Oh? Now, Floyd, can I ask you something? Sure. How come you walk around dazed and glassy eyes? I do? Oh, yeah, why? You got me. <laughs> I guess I'd better get me a girl. When a guy walks around dazed and glassy eyed, you should have a reason. <laughs> Floyd, you ready down there? Yeah, I'll 
What's that? Stand back. He's gonna make the trial run on his labor-saving device. Let her rip, Joe! Here she goes. saving device. You don't even have to lift the luggage into the baggage car. Sounded like she made it all right. Oh, she made it all right. Now go on down and help Floyd put the cannonball back on the track. <laughs> Now? I thought he wouldn't show up until evening. That's what I thought. Well, I guess love doesn't punch a time clock. Steve! Well, we have to make this pretending look as real as possible. Howdy! Hi, Ep. You know Steve here. Sure. Don't get up. <laughs> I wasn't expecting you until this evening. I didn't expect myself until then either. But to tell you the truth, Betty Jo, I just couldn't stay away from you that long. I don't know how to say this, but I've already got a steady. A steady what? <laughs> you have? Who? Steve here. You? Yeah, me. <laughs> oh, darn it. <laughs> No, by golly. Get up. Huh? You heard me. Get up. Okay. Now. Eb. You stay out of this, Betty Joe. This is the only way we can settle it. Come on, you. Well, hold on now, Eb. I don't want to fight. Well, you're going to have to. in the world. Mom, you've got to do something, please. Your little plot backfired, huh? <laughs> all right, all right. What's going on here? Oh, hi, Miss Bradley. We're fighting. Yes, <laughs> now you stop it. No. Come with me. But, Miss Bradley. Yes. <laughs> Don't forget where we left off. <laughs> You. Go ahead, Mom. <laughs> Go ahead, what? Just trying it on for size. It sounds good. Mom. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You're going pretty fast. That's me. Zoom. To the top. <laughs> yeah. And that's what worries me about you and Betty Jo. I beg your pardon? Ev, with all her traveling this summer, Betty Jo is still pretty... Oh, she's got a better figure than that. I'm in square. Oh. Now, you take your case. My case? Am I? Oh, no, 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 just the opposite. Yeah? Yeah. And that's the rub, you see. I just can't take the chance to have Betty Jo's heart broken. Oh, I wasn't looking to break her heart. No, of course you weren't. But what if you can't help yourself? What do you mean? Ep, some men are born to hurt. We are. How do we do that? Ambition, mostly. The drive and urge for new goals to conquer. The striving for new peaks. The... He said it. Zoom to the top. That's where I'm headed, all right. That's bad. Well, let's just consider. First, it was the Douglases, but that wasn't enough for you. Then it was on to Hooterville and Sam Drucker's store. And now it's Pixley and the Pixley Florist. Do you really think you're going to stop there? Oh, no. Of course not. 
If I don't miss my guess, it's on to Crabwell Corners. <laughs> miss my next stop, all right. And what's the Crabwell Corners? A pretty fast crowd. <laughs> yeah. They got a bowling alley there. Stays open till 11 o'clock. <laughs> that don't faze me. Well, of course not. Chris, you're a man on the move. Next, it'll be Riverdale, Cedar Rapids, Omaha, Indianapolis. Yeah. Betty Jo doesn't like Indianapolis. Eh? Yeah. Betty Jo won't like any of it. Regardless of the fact that you think you see a change in her, she just isn't ready for your life. You mean she's reached her peak? <laughs> Let's just say he travels fastest who travels alone. Golly. Excuse me, Miss Bradley. Oh, sorry. I've got to get things straight with Betty Joe before she gets her hopes all built up. It was a good cause. It's okay, kid. You're safe. That's okay. <laughs> Betty Joe, I guess the best way to do this is quick and fast. It's all off between us. It is? I wouldn't be good for you. I'd be too much too soon. Too much. Too... There, there, little girl. You'll get over it in time. Be good to her, fella. Steve? Well, Ed might look back and we have to pretend, you know. Oh, Steve. Ed's way down the path. says I was pretending. Thank you. 